All right, so what's going on? What's going on, everybody? It's your man, Everything by John. Uh, welcome to the podcast. This is episode, uh, oh, no. What episode is this? I think this is episode four, right? <laughs> <laughs> episode four or three. Um, and that just shows how much content I've been putting out for the people, man. And, um, you know, I had to put on these glasses right here, man. I really had to put on these glasses right here for this special guy right here. I mean, this guy right here. I mean, you're about to find out. You're about to find out right here. <laughs> right here. His name on YouTube is The Credit Plug. And I'm telling you right now, a lot of people, they call himself a lot of different names. But this man, this man names himself The Credit Plug. And I guarantee you he lived up to his name. This guy is literally The Credit Plug. And you know what? <laughs> I have another name for him, too. I'm going to call him also The King of the Credit Unions. Okay. <laughs> We go. We gonna get into all of that. We gonna get into uh, that. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> For everybody watching, continue like, share, subscribe, man. And I want to really introduce my guy, the Credit Plug. See what's going on for the people, man. Hey, what's going on? You know, this is actually my first uh, YouTube collaboration. Um, and yeah, I know, like a couple weeks ago, you know, we kind of crossed paths or whatever. And um, you, yeah, I just noticed that you're you're really persistent. You know, and that that's one of the things that I definitely. <laughs> admire about you you know you, you really trying to get down to you know how to get to this credit and yeah. um i could definitely you know see that eagerness in you too so, so yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah no definitely definitely and then you, because of you like i told you um you know a lot of people you know they, they you know I, I on my on my channel i talk about a lot of different things but when it comes to credit i actually just really well not just really but I really just put my foot in the game, you know, really to be honest with you in terms of like really applying and getting these high limit or, you know, close to high limit credit cards. And it's because of watching your videos that I have the confidence to say, you know what, I'm sitting back and watching people and I'm saying, you know what, let me get on my credit unique game. Let me get on my credit, my high credit game. I'm listening to your videos and you are the reason. And you know, other people I saw as well, but most, right. mostly you are the main reason why I got Navy fed, Penn fed, and I got into all these other credit unions that, you know, well, my situation right now is that um, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of maxed out on on the inquiries and everything like that a couple of weeks ago. So uh, I can't really apply for too many cards right now. But I, I have other uh, credit unions I joined just because of you. Because uh, 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 well, I try to actually join Regis Bank, but it's only in, in right. um, in some states. Yeah, and um, but I got into Andrews Federal, and and that's great for somebody who you know has an LLC in a business, you know, for me because they have a lot of business, you know, catering uh, services towards businesses and business owners and things like that. And a lot of these credit unions people don't know about. Well, we're gonna get into everything. So right. <laughs> I, wanted to start it <laughs> I wanted to start it off by actually asking. So tell, ask the, um, tell the people, you know, where are you from exactly, and and um, how do you, by the way, and also, you know, what what kind of, how did you grow up actually? So I'm from uh, Montgomery County, Maryland, which is like, it's right outside of uh, DC. So uh, like the North, uh, Northern Virginia, DC, Maryland, um, that area. So, so yeah, like I grew up, I grew up here for the most part, um, Montgomery County, you know, um, and so like gr growing up here is kind of interesting because, um, you know, Montgomery County is one of the, you know, wealthier, I guess you could say, um, counties, you know, in the entire country, but it's not, it's not necessarily like that, because when people, when people hear Montgomery County, they think, oh, you know, that's, you know, you're from a, like a, a, a well-off area, but it, it wasn't always like that, like, there's been a lot of, like, changes in the area over, you know, like, I'm 32 right now, and, you know, just growing up in different areas it, it's actually like certain cities are like you know segregated as far as like socioeconomics so you know you might go from and it, it's so it's so weird i mean even people who are from dc you know you might be in uh you might be in northwest and you drive you know 10 minutes down the road and then you're you, you know you might go from one of the highest income areas to one of the lowest income areas and <laughs> yeah. that dynamic is is interesting and i was actually able to see you know that because when i grew up i grew up in like the lower part of montgomery county so if any of your subscribers are you know are familiar with maryland uh like silver spring tacoma park i was born in silver spring uh maryland mm -hmm. and you know there's actually a lot of famous people uh from this area like dave yeah. Chappelle. Oh, okay, uh, okay. you know like tommy davidson who's a comedian oh, okay. he actually grew up with my mother uh, oh, wow. So like my my mom my mom was from uh, like Northwest DC, 
Okay. Uh, my dad is J Jamaican, so oh yeah, yeah, they yeah. kind of okay, met. Up. Okay, yeah. So he came, he came to the states um, to go to school. Um, he was in Miami, and then came up to D.C. Met my mom, and uh, like this was back in the '80s when a lot of crazy stuff was going on. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They kind of yeah. met up. They kind of met up in in that lifestyle. So, so yeah, we grew up. Um, I would say it, it's funny because it, it 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 was like like a cycle. So we grew up. Um, I would say you know lower income. Like you know, my mom was on. Uh, you know, she she got the government housing voucher for Section Eight. So like when I was a kid, I didn't know. I didn't know it. You know, I didn't realize yeah, it until yeah. I got older. Like everything right. seemed normal. Um, so yeah, we grew up on a housing voucher and started starting off. You know, we didn't really have much, right? Um, you know, and I didn't really see, you know, we, we live relatively better than like some of our relatives, because, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to have both parents in the household, you know, for the, for the most part, you know, the, yeah. there were definitely ups and downs and stuff like that. But anyways, uh, yeah. so we moved to a, a city called Germantown, probably when I was in like mm -hmm. second grade. Germantown, if you look it up, they're actually the third largest city in the state of Maryland. Um, a lot of people, you know, when you think of Maryland, think of Baltimore, uh, part wow. Columbia, but anyway, so I grew up there, and when I when we moved out there, this was like in '96. So it's funny because for, for the people who for, who are from DC, that part of the the Montgomery County, Maryland, was considered like the country because uh, mm -hmm. it wasn't developed yet. You know, there were um, gotcha. there were a lot more. Uh, I guess it was a lot more white people. Um, you know, just a classic suburban area, townhouses, single family houses, stuff like that. But gotcha. remember. Back then, they were uh, basically they were given the housing voucher. So a lot when a lot of people think of like the Section Eight, you're thinking of like projects, but they actually gave it vouchers so that people could actually, you know, they didn't have to live in the projects necessarily. They could be in any suburb, nice suburb, but they kind of just sprinkle people in. So right. you know, and they did that basically to have um, you know uh, equal opportunities and stuff like that. And right. I could actually credit that to you know, a lot of my success academically. So mm. growing up, like, I was always like, good in math for whatever reason, <laughs> you know, and you know, it's funny, the, the first time I really, uh, you know, I really uh, knew that I was good at math. Um, and I learned the whole concept going to the ice cream truck, because I knew that the good, the good ice creams, cost a little bit more so you, you needed to give the, the guy a little bit more money so yeah so that, that that concept stuck in stuck in my head probably at the age of like four or five right wow and wow. um my dad used to make us uh on the weekend so this is outside of the school he would i don't know if you remember like these old like textbooks that used to have the answers in the back oh like, yeah it's up, <laughs> upside down right so, yeah yeah of course yeah <laughs> so i would say probably in second grade um you know, I would, I was doing like probably fourth grade math at that level. Damn. So, so yeah, like, you know, doing, uh, you know, three digit uh, multiplication, subtraction, division, it just clicked, math always clicked it with me. So, you know, I grew up in that area. Um, and then I guess like in high school, and, and mind you, I was always like above grade level in math, you know, probably normal grade level for reading, but math was just like, so I remember taking, um, uh, microeconomics and macroeconomics course like in 10th grade uh, this was like an AP course and mm -hmm. at the time it's funny at the time so this is back in like 2003 um, mm -hmm. aside from that I had a, another little side hustle so I used to um, well before that I was like you know I was into like little Pokemon cards I was trading yeah of course, of course. Uh, yeah. me too, me too. Yeah, we, <laughs> I was, we got a similar background That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so you know I was uh, trade you know trading cards and stuff like that and you know, for how, however I got it, like, you know, I, I would have like, uh, cause you know, the holographics, you know, so I, I would, oh, yeah. I would trade up cause I wouldn't have holographics. I would just have the yeah, normal. Those are the red joints. Those are the red joints right. right there. But for whatever reason, that little skill set taught me like the trading and bartering, you know, cause I, I knew I wanted the holographics. So yeah. I would, you know, use my sales strategies and convincing right, to, right, to get, right, to get right. the other person up off the holographics. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you really bringing back memories right now though. Cause I yeah. remember like, I remember when I was in school, it was the same exact way. Like we used to be in the backyard going into school or even just like on our break. And then we all used to like play with our cards or show each other, each, each other cards. And I used to be like, yo, 
Like, nah, I need that cause right now. I need, exactly. I need, like, 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 we used to beat people up, you know? I mean, you know, it was crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's that's how, that's, right, that's how much we love, like, these things. And then, it, like you just said, it, it showed us different things in life at an early age of how exactly. to maneuver, how to, you know, look at different viruses. And it's like, wow, like, when you get older, it's like, wow, like, I exactly. really learned that from an early age, man. And it's so crazy, even with math, too. I, yo, you bring back memories, man, because I used to be <laughs> the same thing. I, I was a nerd, like, I'm talking about, like, I used to do the, I used to, I used to, like, when I was in, like, what, second, third grade, I used to, I, with the, with, like, because I remember, if you remember, like, with the, with the three digit and a four digit, it was like, oh, man, that's, like, fourth grade, fifth grade, nobody right. wanted to touch that, it's like, but I used to love knowing that, though, exactly. you know what I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, hold up, I love this, like, but, you know, for, um, you know, if I fast forward, I wasn't, like, I was, I was so nice in math all the way until, like, 11th, 12th grade, because I was, I was nice in, um, in, uh, what you call that, um, what you call that? Because I wasn't good in trigonometry, man. But I had okay. to, I had to take, I had to take pre-calculus, and a lot of people didn't want to take uh, pre-calculus because uh, it wasn't required. But if you did take it, you get your advanced diploma, and then you didn't have to take it in college. You didn't have to take right. math in college, right. right? So I took the pre-calculus, and then I didn't have to take no math in college. But I wasn't good in trigonometry, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was a challenge, man, for that. But 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 leading up to that, though, when like when I was little, just like you, man, I was super nice in math. Like I'm talking about. Prodigy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it it's funny. Um, so yeah, like I like I was all it just was just always something that, that came natural, like numbers. So so yeah, so anyways, you know, starting off like I started started doing uh the trade and whatever, but then once I got to high school, now this is like the early two thousands, this is right at the dawn of like eBay. So eBay had just mm -hmm. came out. Um, and so what I was doing, so I played sports and everything too. Mm. Like my dad would always like reward us with like, uh, like Jordan sneakers. Like if I got good mm. grades, so I was okay. I always <laughs> was laced with like the freshest Jordan. So, <laughs> so then I don't know how I came up, came upon this. Uh, but anyways, like I was able to, um, what I started doing was I started shipping like the fake knockoff Jordans from China. Oh, and back shit. then, back then they didn't have like PayPal. Well, PayPal was new, but like over there, they could only accept like Western Union. So I had oh, the like okay, okay. Western Union money out there and then hope and pray that, you know, the you get, shoes get, come. Yeah, yeah, come back. Yeah, yeah. But even back then, like I remember I was in 10th grade and, you know, all the, all the kids, they would see that I, I, I had the authentic shoe. So when I was ordering them over, and, and mind you, like this is in the suburbs, so like not every, it's it's not as what it is now, like with sneakerheads and everyone, yeah, right, is official like that. Right, but, they wasn't up on game. They wasn't up on. Yeah, game. there was was so yeah. so for yeah. a short for a short window. You know, I had um, you know, I had a couple high schools, you know, on lock. Like I <laughs> like I was ordering like shoes, like sending them to my friends' addresses, yeah, like. Yeah. And then you I was hustling. Get, you was hustling. Yeah. Don't you see? Don't get fooled by the glasses, man. Right. Don't get fooled. I, you know, so I, I get them for like, I get them for like $30 and I Damn. sell them for like 120 and people got to remember like back in 20, 2003 or whatever, like for a high school kid, you know, making a hundred dollars, you know, five, six hundred dollars, you know, off some, you know, off of just one little lick. Like that was good money. I didn't have bills. I didn't have nothing. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, yeah. So, so that was like, and, the and, 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 and not to cut you off real quick. I mean, look at look everything you just said. And you and it's funny how you said the name eBay, but everything you just said, that hustle right there, when you fast forward, what, 10, 15 years later, they called that drop shipping. Right. Are you kidding me? Like, this is this, these are things that you were implementing from a long time ago. Imagine if you would have did that now or, like, when it first came out. Right. Like, so, so, what, so what happened after, after a while, like, then, like, eBay started to get flooded, and I was just like, you know, pe then, pe you know, people would be complaining. But anyways, yeah, that was, like, one of my yeah. first hustles. So then... You know, high school, you know, I, you know, I excelled in high school. That was a breeze. Um, I played sports. So aside from that, it's funny because even in high school, like I was in different circles. I wasn't just with like the, uh, you know, the athletes or like, you know, the cool kids or, you know, I had like I also was in the marching band. Like I played the tuba. So, you know, I, like I have like my academic friends. I got my athlete friends. I got my band friends. So I was kind of different, and you know, it, yeah. it, 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 it was it was different from what people were expecting because they, were, you know, a lot of people expect like you know you shouldn't be in because I I took the highest level that they offered uh, they offered Calc BC which is like the mm. highest level 
Um, so I was, yeah, so I was, I was in these classes and, and, and a lot of those classes, I was the only black kid in those classes, mm. but I was used to, I was used to being that because like I said, the county where we lived in, it was at, well, way back in the nineties, it was like mostly white, but then it, 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 it eventually got more like, uh, uh, how do you say it? Um, multicultural, whatever. But anyways, just being like the only person in these courses, like these high level, uh, math classes, to some people it was like weird and not not only to like other black students but like to other you know uh, you know other students because i didn't fit inside the norm you know right, what they would right, expect right. so anyways yeah but anyways yeah so i went um high school was a breeze and then i wound up um getting accepted to the university of maryland wow, wow. um so yeah so there but that's when things kind of you know i started to have these life experiences so when I first went, you know, it was just like, wow, like, you know, I just felt that level of freedom, like, you know, like, I don't have to, you know, I don't have to uh, come home at a certain time, you know, yeah, and, yeah, and, you yeah. know, it's the girls and, you know, yeah, 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 parties yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. So, you know, it's funny. because was, was that a big party school? Um, it, I mean, it, I definitely, yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess you could say, yeah, I guess you could say that, um, I really, you know, because freshmen, you can't really get into the bars like that. Okay. Um, like, I would use my older brother's, like, ID sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. For I, the I most know they part, had the house, the, the, the dumb parties and all that, right? Yeah, so, you know, yeah. and, you know, that, because, you know, college takes a certain level of discipline. Like, it's not like high school Ooh. where it's just a, like, high, like, in high school, I never, I never, um, you know, stayed up overnight writing papers or studying like exactly. that. So, so I figured, exactly. I was figured, yeah, like I, I had a 3.7 GPA in high, all throughout high school. So I was like, mm, yeah, I, I could do this in college, but I learned that that wasn't the case. It wasn't the so, case. Yeah. There's nobody there to hold your hand or anything like that. And he wasn't exposed to those different environments. As exactly. Well. So like, a lot of, a lot of woo. distractions. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I went there in like, I remember my first semester that was my worst GP I ever got I got like I had like, too, a, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I had like a, a 2.5 like I got two B's oh, and no, two you did C's. better than me I had like I remember my, my freshman year because I, I was in a but you know lucky for you you was on campus but I, I was off campus I'm you know I'm from New York Brooklyn but I was um in the city and going to college in John Jay at first and my the, at the end of my freshman year my, my GPA was like a 1.8 and, you know, that, that college was kind of strict at the same time. They said that, you know, if you don't maintain at least a 2.0 in one right. semester, not even two, in one semester, so like most of the time is for the whole year. But they said if you don't, if you go under that for one semester, they put you on academic probation like right away. So by the end of the year, a lot of people that I was like with, you know, that I met in college, they either dropped out or transferred and they had to come back years later or just never, you know, finish. You know what I'm saying? Like right. in general. And I was like, oh, but after after I seen that, that's when I like kind of straightened out. And then, and then I ended out with like a, a 3.5 or something like that. But I transferred to like different schools as well. Though. Okay. So it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no. I mean, I, I, I guess with me, it was the same way. Like I, I start to tighten up, you know, late, like later. But, you know, even during that time. Um, so 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 here was the difference here. Right. right? So, you know, like my parents, they didn't pay for my school or whatever. So I had to take out student loans and stuff like that. Okay, okay. And um, I don't know if you remember, like, uh, they would give like refund checks. So it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> so, you, so I, I just started getting, I, I got my first refund check this year. I just got financial aid this year. I'm still trying to finish. I'm still, um, I'm about to get my um, my bachelor's uh, in uh, this, this coming December. Okay. But I just got my first financial check this year. This year, yeah. I'm 20, I'm 26. So here's the thing about that. So at the time, and you're a little older, a little bit more mature, you know, but imagine. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm young. You, you're 32. Right, right. But I'm saying like when I was, I was, I was eight, 18, 19, right? That, that's diff yeah. That's a whole different, you know, level of maturity. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. In that, in that sense. You, you know oh, what I'm saying? Oh, so you're getting that money. Ooh, I know. So, what you, yeah, what you doing with that? You... <laughs> yeah, so, you know, you I remember getting that? these refund checks and like, you know, just. You know, just 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 blowing through them. You know what I'm blowing, saying? Not not thinking blowing. like, damn, like nah. ten years ten years later, this is I don't have right. to pay this back <laughs> with right, interest. Right, but right, right. Oh, yeah. but yeah, yeah, so so I'm going through school, and um, you know, I would say like around my junior year, I got an internship. Um, because I don't know if you remember, uh, like back in '09, it got rough. Like, yeah. um, this was the first financial risk, uh, crash or whatever. But you know, even you know it. 1920 I didn't have any I, I wasn't like working full-time so I didn't un, like I, I didn't I couldn't really like 
feel it as you know people who work because I, I mean i'm in school i'm not working right. i don't i don't right. understand what's going on but right. it makes sense to me looking at it back at it now but um but yeah so so like that time was kind of rough because like i said i wasn't getting any money from from home um i've always like had a job but i went through like probably i would say like four months without working right so i was just really roughing it i mean you i mean a lot of people can relate like broke college, you oh, know, yeah. the whole term broke college student. That's really oh, yeah, what, of course. that's really what it, how, how it was yeah. for me. So I remember yeah. I finally got like an internship. I was working at this place. Um, it's basically like a nonprofit financial institution. Um, it was called like the Calvert Social Investment Foundation. It's, it's in a, a city called Bethesda. Um, it's like one of the like wealthier cities um, in the Maryland area, but mm -hmm. I basically yeah. would uh, work there probably like, 20 hours a week mm, okay. and um there i did like that this was like my first professional like not even a full-time job but just like the first like office type of type of gig before yeah. that i did like you know just work little odds and end jobs uh summer camps and stuff like that so this mm. was like my first like you know office job and so they basically the way they work is they're kind of like an intermediary so when wealthy people or even just foundations like, um, and this is another misconception when people hear about philanthropy and stuff like that, they're not necessarily just handing that money away. Like they'll, they'll, uh, in, they'll invest that money basically at 0% interest rate. So the, the, they'll, they'll lend it to like this nonprofit organization, right? They get a tax write off, they get tax benefits from that, right? Um, and then what this institution would do is they would basically lend this money out to like, affordable housing developers, like social impact, um, other like community development financial institutions, um, uh, so, you know, uh, other people who do like social costs, they would even do like international microfinancing mm -hmm. where, you know, there's these um, companies um, like Action and like, um, I, can't, I can't remember all of them, but yeah, like th they're basically lending for social causes, right? So I basically did like, portfolio servicing uh there so basically what that was is um i would exactly help. what you mean yeah <laughs> yeah so like i would wow. i would basically um they have the, the, these different portfolios based on like what the mission was so if it was a right. housing if it was green energy if it was uh like like whatever the cost may be so i worked with like the underwriters the portfolio managers but i was basically doing pushing a lot of the paperwork as far as you know tracking um you know, different financial, uh, uh, quarterly financial statements from all the borrowers, uh, making sure that they're in compliance with like their loan agreements. So like looking at the different covenants. Uh, so the a covenant is basically just like a, a stipulation right. that yeah. like a borrower has to uphold in order to be in compliance with their loan agreement. So exactly. I basically do that. Um, and so I was there for about two years, but mind you back then, I didn't see the full picture, right? I'm just, you know, to me, it was more so just like, yeah, this is a job. I'm making a little bit of money. It's getting me by. Um, so yeah, I worked there for about two years. And then um, then I actually went through like, I guess a, 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 a life experience where, you know, I had to basically drop out of school for a semester. Um, and then, like I said, it just got rough for me uh, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, during that time I was going through just a lot, like a lot of family issues. Um, you know, at the time I was like dating this girl who, you know, you, I, I mean, you probably know how I was doing. You're young and you know, you yeah, think, yeah. but yeah, like I, I went through a lot of like just personal, personal issues that kind of like, you know, derailed me a little bit. Um, I was on academic probation. So I had a couple, I had a couple hurdles to jump to get back into school. And um, so, yeah, I, I wound up getting back into school, you know, getting back on track um, and then wound up graduating in 2012. So it took me about six, well, five academic years, but like I had a one year break in between. So a total of like six years. So from like oh, 2006 to like 2012, that was like yeah. my whole school. Yeah. And so, um, and I guess, yeah, congratulations. Thank right you. Now. Thank you. So yeah, I had to change majors a couple of times because, yeah. I don't know if you know how it is, like some majors, like the pre, or at least at Maryland, like the prerequisites, they'd only offer in the spring. So if you didn't enroll in that, 
then that would like you'd have to wait a whole year to retake that. So like I had to change the majors. Right. So, I just told somebody that. I just told somebody that. I'm like, yo, if you play around and you look on the um, you know, on the registration classes for the next semester and you play around, you miss it or whatever, that might that that might cause you a whole year towards your graduation. Exactly, exactly. So at first I was um, you know, well, first going in, I thought I wanted to do accounting, but um the bit the business school is like a separate application too. So once you're actually at the University of Maryland, if you, once you declare your major after 60 credits, then you'd have to apply to that. So at that point, like my grades were too jacked up to even consider that. So then um, I, I switched to economics. And then the, the situation I just told you, their prerequisite course is in the spring. Um, and you have to pass with a certain grade. And I think the first time I tried it, I got like a D, <laughs> right? So oh, yeah. I, I couldn't even uh, continue with this. So I wound up switching to public policy um, and that's mm. what I got my, finally got my degree in. But anyways, fast forward, graduation 2012. Um, I got, uh, you know, and it, I, my, I guess career path kind of pivoted, right? So I wasn't just doing like fi finance related. I wound up going into, you know, more so like research, um, uh, like programming, doing data analysis, stuff like that. So I was working for a government agency, um, uh, doing contract work there. And then once I graduated, that role transitioned to a full-time opportunity. And so at the time, man, so I was living in an off-campus, uh, kind of like, this is probably one of the worst neighborhoods in like the DC area, um, in, in, in PG County. So mind you, like I'm, yeah, you know, probably the prior three years, like I'm just roughing it, right? So I finally get my first full time job, and this is a mistake that a lot of you know, uh, looking back at it, um, got my first full time job, and the first thing I do, I get out that you know roach infested apartment, and I go get a studio apartment like in the city, and you know paying fifteen hundred dollars a month, but wait, what 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 year was this again? So this is in twenty twelve. 2012. Oh, so that's, a, so hold on. So where exactly were you again at that point? So, the studio? so I was in uh, the city called Hyattsville, uh, Maryland. It, it's like, it's like a couple miles from the campus, but um, so the University of Maryland campus is surrounded by PG County. So like the, right, PG County, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the school and everything is fine, but like the surrounding area and I, like, I, I, I'm not throwing shade, but like, it's a high crime area, at least back then. Yeah. It's probably mm -hmm. still the same way then. Yeah. Um, you know, and just from that experience, man, like I was roughing it, like, you know, I didn't have, I didn't know anything about credit. Um, and then at that time, I remember my school loans are starting to come due. So mm. I'm just like, man, I could barely survive. Like I'm not just ignoring those student loan, uh, and stuff like that. Wait, wait, so, so how long did it take for the student loans to start kicking in in terms of like how, when, like, when did they tell you, like, you, you, you have to start paying this? Um, I think it was... So remember, I was taking out loans in 20, uh, 2006 and 2007. So, mm -hmm. you know, those didn't, the payments didn't kick in until graduation. So like 2012 is really when they were like, all right, now start making the payments. So it was like, as soon as I graduated, pretty much, that's when the mm -hmm. payments start kicking in. But anyways, okay. not to get off track. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I got my first, once I got my first full-time job, I got a little, con a little studio apartment, um, and, you know, at the time, I, uh, I, I then got a better job. So you know, I started moving up and um, I wound up working for this other organization, the County Economic Development Organization. And that's where I got started getting the insight into like SBA uh, lending and stuff like that. And it was so eye opening because and mind you, this is still years until I start really like focusing on like the personal credit. But. Um, I got to see the ins and outs as far as like what's required as far as SBA loans. Um, and then I realized, so I'm working on kind of like the intake part where people from the public inquire and I help them get their packages together to submit. And a lot of these companies, a lot of these like, you know, they were like startup companies, but the companies that were actually in this portfolio were like well established. Like I could, and mind you, I could see all the all, right, maybe all, all the information. information. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, mm -hmm. you know, they have 800 credit scores. They got a right. million dollars. You know, because they have to also, aside from their business, uh, you know, stuff, they also have to submit like 
uh, financial disclosures. So, you know, yeah. you know how much assets they have, how much their home is worth, how much right. money. That's why the application is so damn low. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's extensive. And, yeah. and I'm just thinking like, man, the people who are inquiring, they have no idea what it really entails to get approved. Yeah, um, yeah, all, yeah. Like, like the companies that were getting approved, a lot of them were like developers who've been around for 50 years, 40 years. So it wasn't like small business in the SBA, exactly. SBA defines it as less than 10 million. So, you know, and, and that kind of like blew my mind, like less than 10 million is considered. So it's like uh, businesses who have, who are making 5 million a year, they're still considered a small still business. Still considered small business. Crazy, crazy to think about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so, yeah. so I'm working at this place, you know, for a little, for a little while. And then my career kind of like evolved. Then I started doing more focus on like the data analytics. So like um, I started picking up like programming skills. So um, I do a lot of like programming, working with like database, uh, taking data out of databases and, um, you know, doing like data science, doing like, you know, machine learning algorithms, um, more so like statistics and data science. Like mm -hmm. that, that, that's what I do day to day. Um, but then I guess I fast forward a couple of years. So I'm living in this uh, studio apartment for like three years, paying top dollar rent. And this is a, like a, a 400 square foot studio, but you know, it's the city life. And I just realized like, man, I'm not really getting ahead. You know, I'm having to pay half my money to rent. So, so then, you know, I wound up moving in with a couple friends and we start house hacking basically. So I, I was going from paying, you know, 1500 a month for rent to like 400 a month. So I started doing that for about three years, right? Saving money, saving money. And then basically what inspired me to start doing what I, what, what I do now and as far as the credit plug, um, I was actually inspired um, by another YouTube video. So this was, uh, yeah, to, just to be completely transparent, um, this was a YouTube video. It was, um, it was Ty Lopez. Um, oh. he, he had this kid on there who was like, Oh, he talking about the, with the 50 credit cards or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. Oh, I didn't know that video was that old, though. Yeah, probably 2017. Okay, That's when okay, gotcha, gotcha, so, gotcha. so I saw that and a light bulb clicked in my head. Like, I'm like, I'm spending all this. Like, I, I have decent income at that point. Um, but I'm thinking, like, I'm not let you know, all the other times, all the other business ventures I've ever gotten into, I'm basically bootstrapping it using my own money. So I was just thinking, like, wow, like, if I actually had some money to actually, you know, leverage to do that. So I set out on a mission um, to basically replicate the same thing that he did. I think he said he had, like, over a million dollars worth of credit right. lines or something like right, that. Right, right, right. Um, and he was only, like, 18, 19, he was like something eight, like that, 18, right? yeah, yeah. And so, and so, yeah, and so like, and then other, other things started to, to come to mind too, because I remember that was uh, a little bit before, before that, like I had got my first um, car loan, the first car I ever financed. And mm. at the time, you know, I, I'm just going in there blind. So I go, I go in there and um, I didn't read the contract at all. I was like, wow, they accepted, you know, they approved me. <laughs> like, <laughs> just <laughs> tell me where to sign. That's basically my attitude. Like, yeah. prior to then, I was like, you know, I don't have to, you know, and it was a, new, a newer car and, you know, they're approving me because the, the first time I went in. Um, well, who, who, who did you get financing from? Like, the dealership you found it for you or? It was, uh, so I went to CarMax and okay. um, the company was actually Credit Acceptance, American Credit Acceptance Corporation. So, okay. mind you, so, I'm pay the car was only like 15,000, right? So I'm paying this car loan for four years, right? And, and I don't know how it is then, but like back then you really couldn't see what your balance is unless you like called the 800. It wasn't like a lot of these places where you can log in and you see, okay. Cause I didn't know, I didn't understand like the whole uh, uh, daily accrued interest, right? So I'm thinking, okay, if my, if my car loan is $400, then when I make my payment, then my balance will go down like that. So I realized this four years later when, okay, the 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 original amount was like fifteen thousand plus. I had to get gas. You was, was only paying interest down. Well, it was the majority of the payment was being applied. That's what I that's what I learned like years later. I'm like, cause cause then I like check to see because I know okay, um, my my payment was actually four fifty. So I'm like, all right, if I'm paying four fifty over three years. 
uh, you know, 450 times whatever, that's 5,400 a year times three years, you know, that's like, you know, 16,000 something, 16,200 or something like that. And um, I realized, I, I'm like, I already paid the amount of the original balance just in my notes. But then I check my balance and they're saying like, I still owe like 10 G's. I'm like, how is that? Yeah. I'm thinking, how is that possible? Then that's when I knew I got finesse because I looked at the agreement and the interest was 23%. Wow. But mind you, at the time, I'm not thinking. I'm just thinking right. I got a car with a payment that I can afford. Right, right, right. So, and you know, that's, that's, that's right there is, is so scary. And it's so, um, it's so crazy because a lot of people are going, at, are going through that right now. Like, I literally, I'm thinking about a friend right now. He bought a Lexus, a 2020, and he's paying like maybe 500 a month, uh, which is kind of high anyway. But right. um, I don't know if he read between all, all, you know, all the different terms because it's a, he, he's on a lease. He didn't finance. Okay, okay. okay. He's on a lease. But at the end of that lease, though, I don't know, you know, if, 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 if he did like what you said, like, for example, if he started already in his notes, like literally saying, okay, I'm paying 500 a month. I don't right. know if it would add up to after 36 months. I don't know if he'll be done with that. Right. But you see what I'm saying? Because of the accrued interest. Right. But I don't I don't know what the terms are. Right. I mean, the lease leases are a little bit more flexible because yeah, after, they are. They are. yeah like you hand it in. But like once, once you take out a note on the car, it's like you got to you got to pay it off. So yeah, you got to pay it off. Yeah. So like that lesson. And then also, too, I remember like trying to rent a place, you know, tr uh, you know, trying to rent an apartment and you know, my credit was jacked up. And so then, you know, all these little, little things. And then I'm just thinking like, wow, after I saw that video, that Ty Lopez video, I'm thinking like, wow, if only I knew this information a long time ago, it like, it would have changed my trajectory. Like I wouldn't have had but, to. But maybe, maybe not, maybe not. Because like you said, it took you all those experiences. Exactly. Yeah. Now. You see what I mean? Exactly. So, exactly. You know. So, 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 so yeah. So through those experiences, I was like, wow. So I set out on a goal to basically go to as many financial institutions as I can, mm -hmm. research them. Uh, so wow, I would literally wow. go, um, a buddy of mine, whenever he was available, like I would take him with me and we would go to these different credit unions, these different banks um, and go in and sit down and, and see what products they have, what their um, uh, approval requirements were, what type of data that you needed to get approved. Um, and so I went through that process and then mind you, uh, then I'm still like, I don't have excellent credit. I probably have, my credit's probably like in the low 600s, like 620, 600, something like that. So I was like, okay, I don't have the best credit. So I know I'm not going to get approved everywhere, but I do have one of the things that I did have, like I said, cause I was saving up money. I'm going to use my money to establish relationships with these financial institutions. So what I started doing was opening up these secured credit cards. Mm. Um, and this is a constant, this is, I would say is what is what really helped me uh, get to where I'm at right now, because, and this is a lot of thing uh, of one th aspect I always try to emphasize, even with my subscribers and followers, uh, because a lot of times, you know, people think that, you know, if you have just a good credit score, you could walk into any bank and get whatever you want. But, you know, I try mm. to emphasize the relationship because, the one thing with secure cards, um, if you know, if you just walk off the street, right? And because remember, like banking relationship, it's a two-way street. It's not just you know you get credit for them and that's it. You know, it has to work both ways. You know, mm -hmm. they have to benefit from you. The way they benefit from you is from your deposits because with banks they have what's called fractional reserve lending. So whatever, whatever, um, however much deposits they have, they could lend up to like ten times. Uh, so it was like a 10% uh, reserve. They recently lowered it to like 9.6% so that they could be even more leveraged. So <clears throat> going to the table with money also reduces the risk, the perceived risk to the banks too. So um, even if you may not get credit from them, if you come to them with money, you know, because other money, money attracts other money, right? Um, they don't want to deal with people who only just want money from them. They want people who actually, you know, have some type of money. So the secure card option is what really got me started. So I went to a couple different banks. Um, I got like a Discover uh, uh, It secured. I got a Navy Federal secure card. I got a TD Bank secure card. Wow. Um, I got a bunch of these secure cards that unsecure. So basically, 
you know, you get your money back. And I was like, wow, that's a brilliant um, concept because, what, and even when I try to explain this, some people think that they're losing money or their money's tied up. It's still your money. You just have access to it in the form of a piece of plastic, right? It's still they're your not, money. They're not used to that. They're not used to that concept. They don't want to give all the money up because they see the cash coming out of their pocket. And right. Like, I don't I think know, it, but. It's a psychological thing, yeah. Exactly, so, yeah. so yeah, yeah I, I started doing that with a couple, uh, you know, financial institutions, and um, you know, over the course of probably two years, you know, I don't even know how I many. I'd have to count, but I established a bunch of relationships. Um, I started getting in with different credit unions, and not just like so. And and one thing you'll notice about my channel, like, you know, I don't talk about you know, all the, the, I mean, I do, but I don't focus just on like the major card issuers or like some of the major banks, a lot of people focus on because exactly. there's a lot of people already making those videos. Like, I don't want to, exactly. you know, exactly. I, I want to share, like, <laughs> I want to share like the, the gems that the, a lot of people right, don't know right. about. Exactly. So, and so that's, yeah. And that's, and that's why I call you the credit plug. And that's why I call you the king of the credit unions because these people, they have no clue. And this is due to the work that you put in. And it's right. so important that you mention that story because it took it took for those hardships or, you know, getting finessed or anything to get to that point where you say, you know what, before I join anything and, and, and business and life in general, I'm going to do my research. I'm exactly. going to find out exactly what's going on. I'm going to find out what's the terms. I'm going to read through my paperwork. And that should be that should be that should be integral in anything you do. And that's the reason you're the king of the credit unions now. And, and, and you know, the thing about it, too, the, the learning experience of going through the process. That's like the best teacher. Cause you know, even starting off, like, unless I had some personal experience going through that process and, and, and the reason why I, I started the whole, you know, credit plug. So I probably, it's probably been about a year, right. Since I first like, okay, I said, I'm a, uh, I'm gonna do this with the intent of sharing my experience that I went through over these past two years. So I was like, this is a lot of valuable information. And like I said, like, there's been a lot of trials and tribulations, even mistakes that I made along the way. But I, was, yeah. but I was saying like, if I could package this information together and share it with other people, you know, it could reduce the learning curve so that, you know, if someone else is going through it, you know, they can learn from my mistakes and, you know, fast forward to it. Um, but yeah, it's all about going through the process. That, that's been the best teacher, I would say. Um, and like I said, like I'm still learning every day. Like I learn from subscribers, I learn from, you know, just like, I, I don't stop. Like I, I try to make it a goal to at, at least, um, well, probably not at this particular moment, but you know, I would literally drive around and, and go into these banks and actually like speak to these lenders and, yeah. you know, get a feel from it. Cause there's a lot of great, uh, you know, financial institutions out here, but they might not have the, the marketing dollars. They might not have, right. you know, right. they might not be that large enough to, to, you know, really, let their message get out there. So, you know, I, exactly. I try to, you know, I try to get out here every week and uh, definitely, um, you know, share that information. And so I started this probably about, I would say like early last year. Um, I was like, man, I'm really going to go forward with this full throttle. Um, so I, basically how I got into it, I started doing trade lines. So I was like, wow, I got all these accounts. I got all these accounts now. Um, and what really started, so I got this, I told you I got this TD Bank credit card, right? So what I did was I got my uh, my tax return check, right? So I just put took that whole, I got probably about like 5,000, put that whole 5,000 down on a secure card. I went in there and, you know, they were like, yeah, we'll, we'll um, assess, you know, after a couple months, um, if we can unsecure. I was like, bet. So just like clockwork, <laughs> after, eight, after eight months, they unlocked my uh, security deposit, but then they they, I kept the limit. I was like, "Wow!" Oh, so they gave dope. me my they gave me my money back, and I still get and to keep have. this. Damn. And now you now you finesse now. <laughs> it, here's the icing on the cake. Here's icing on the cake. The lady told the uh, the the lady told me she was like, "Yeah, you could add up to twenty five authorized users Damn. on that account." I'm like. Wow. So that really got me in the game. Cause then after that point, I was like, okay, I'm gonna start making money. Yeah. Business. yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I probably made I probably made just as much back off of that, you know, and it was really of no cost to me. Like wow, yeah, like yeah, really, yeah, really, yeah. like really so so that really started me. So I was doing trade lines for a while, but then I was like, 
you know, this isn't scalable, you know. And so then what I started doing, I offered a course, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one course with, um, you know, other uh, people who were interested. But then that really, um, I didn't, I realized I didn't have the bandwidth for that because it's kind of difficult, you know, having, because, you know, the demand for it was crazy. Like I, I started my Instagram, um, you know, probably like a year ago. And, you know, I was just posting pictures of my experience every time I got a, a, car, a credit card approval and um, or, or limit increase or just showing people like what's possible. So yeah. a lot of a lot of people were interested in that. And I was just telling people like when I started this, I didn't have I didn't even have like a 700 credit score. Like I like when I started, this, like I said, my credit yeah. score was like 620, 640, you know, yeah. and it, it eventually like got up there. But um, just to tell people, it's like you could still build credit even if your credit's not you know perfect um yeah and you know there's there's nothing stop like it's out here for like it, I, and i say this anyone who has a social security number you can get all the same things you know that in terms of what i have in terms of you know credit cards and even still like i come across clients who have higher credit scores than i do and they're like how did you get all this you know like right now um you know the amount of available credit i have is like over two hundred thousand. And I feel like I'm just at the beginning, you know, just at the beginning, you know, there's right, people, right. you go on like my fight though, there's people, you know, much older people, middle-aged people who have, you know, million dollars worth of um, available credit, you know, because right, right. it takes time and, you know, you obviously time. can't like apply for everything at once. You got to let your exactly. accounts age and exactly. let inquiries fall off and, and guard and stuff like that. So, so yeah, I, I started, um, you know, I had my Instagram and that was going well. And then, I would say probably like six months ago for whatever reason, like they disabled my Instagram. So I was like, man, I put in a lot of work to build that up. So then I was like, let me focus on YouTube. So mm. I started my YouTube channel probably back in October. And, uh, okay. you know, it really started to, to pick up a little bit of traction like the last mm. two months or so, probably the beginning of this year. And yeah, um, and yeah like it's, as soon as that started to happen, I was like, yeah, I got to keep, and, and not only that, man, like I get testimonials from people all the time. Like I have phone calls with people, like some of my clients are like, you know, homeless or oh, facing wow. a uh, bankruptcy, man. Like, like, like some of this stuff has brought me to tears to some of the situations wow, wow, wow. that I hear and people tell me how the information that I share with them was able to change their lives. Wow, so wow, 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 that wow. really, that's really what keeps me going. And, and why you know, I try to go as hard as possible with, putting this information out because you know if it can help someone uh who, who doesn't already know about it um you know that's really my goal that's what i you know that's and and i didn't start this to like make money or it was just out of a passion um yeah, yeah, man yeah, like yeah, like yeah. I, I, I i'll i'll stay up sometimes 4 a.m on my phone like trying to research these different credit unions i can tell, I can tell. Like that. <laughs> yeah so so yeah man yeah. like that that that's that's my story and i um, definitely going to you know keep it going for 2020 um I definitely want to get up there, uh, just keep getting this information out because um, I feel like even with our community, like there's still a lot of work to be had because oh, yeah. um, not, probably not our generation, but like, you know, older generations had a different view on credit. You know, their right. idea was like credit is bad credit. And is, so cash. And, and, and look at your, your dad coming from Jamaica. My mom's from, from Haiti. It's like, yo, we, we came from that West Indian. Like, yo, cash only. Like, I'm not dealing with those exactly. credit. Exactly. Like, I'm working all these jobs. Like, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to owe nobody nothing. Yo, like, nah, nah, nah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Right. So, you know, even um, in the, the, the way you have to look at it now, too, like in, in 2020, like credit is, it's really the data that where the value is, is at, right? Um, cause even like the demand, like I told you with like the trade line and stuff like that, you'd be surprised like how many people like I'd have to turn down because I don't have enough trade lines to help people to, to right. build them up. And it, it, it's an epidemic, bro. Like the cold credit thing. And yeah. the thing about it, as much as people don't like to admit, um, is credit, credit is an instrumental part of just the way society moves. Like, even if you're someone who's cash only, you gotta think. Um, whatever house you live in, you know, if, if you don't own it outright, but if you're renting, you know, your landlord likely had to get a mortgage to get a mortgage. Right, he had that's, that's credit. That's the, that's the name of the game. That's it. And you right. brought up so many, so many great points because at the end of the day, people really, like you just said, they really don't understand to this day. They don't understand the power of credit. And really it's just 
financing in general. Like this whole country was built off of the lending. This whole world was like most of this world, or I would say the most successful parts of the world was built off of relationships from banking and credit and financing and these things right here. Like this, this is how people get successful. Right. Like people really don't understand how deep it goes with credit. And 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 look at what you just said on a on a lower level, you know, compared to like the world, you know, the biggest companies and everything. When you have testimonials, people, you know, coming out of situations like homelessness and drugs or whatever to come to a situation, a, a way better situation just because of credit or financing. I mean, that just that right there alone shows you how important this is, man. And you have a testimony from me from the beginning of the video. I told you, right. I got uh, I got a uh, Navy fan. I got um, Ken Fed because of you, and I got the Apple Card as well for four K. Okay. So I got twenty. I got twenty four K in a couple of days. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now I maxed out. I maxed out now. Yeah, you know for now. I can't quite, yeah, for now. For now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. So you know, and like you said, the relationships is so is so important because quick story how I got my first credit card is it's, it's funny how you mentioned the year 2017 because that's my that's the first year actually I was I, I'm sorry it was 2016 I got my first credit card actually was applying for credit and everybody was denying me and I'm like what's going on I didn't have right. no credit history or nothing I'm like man I went to Capital One um like right by me on the avenue and I'm like man you know I talked to this uh you know relationship bank and you know we was I was sitting at our desk and I'm like you know, I don't know what to do. Like, I, I tried to apply for a Capital One card. I tried to apply for other cards. They, they not, they not, they don't want to accept me. She said, right. you know what? She looked at me and like the way I was and, you know, how, you know, I was kind of, you know, I had my little swag and she was like, okay, I'll be right back. She went to the back. She, I, I saw her on the computer. She typed in a little bit of buttons or whatever. She came back and then she got me approved for my first Capital One card. You know what I'm saying? So I tell people all the time, listen, if you can, go in there. Talk to, talk to somebody. Right. You see what I'm saying? Talk to people on the phone. That's why they have these reconsideration lines. Go exactly. into the bank. Go into the bank. Talk to them. Let them see you. Let them hit. Let them hear your story. Let them hear it in your voice. And they and they might rock with you. I tell them all the time. Right. I, I mean, even even there's certain banks now. Um, the even Chase, for example, like um, a lot of people don't know that they have what's called um, and I, I forget the the term, but it's like. Uh, it's kind of like like what you just described. Um, I, I, I'll have to shoot the, the term to you, but it's basically where they're not they're not using like their computer algorithms to determine your approval. They'll actually have a, a manual, per, you know, a human being like look at look at all your financial information and basically do a manual override. So maybe if if the computer didn't pick you up. But they're making, um, I think it's called discriminant banking or something like that. But basically, they, they basically can override whatever the computer, you know, would have given you. But, but yeah, I mean, you know, credit is definitely, you know, a, a important part of, you know, just how society moves. I mean, I mean, it, it's even more evident what's going on now with the whole COVID oh, yeah. um, nineteen or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. you see how things how things fall apart. Like we're probably what you know, three or four weeks into it and you yeah. see a lot of companies going under, Fall apart. but Fall apart. you know, prior, prior to that, they're saying how the U S economy is booming and how it's at all time highs. But if it's like, if, if it's that fragile, that a couple of weeks, you know, and people are doomed, then right. that just goes to show like, you know, the importance of having credit. And, and my last point too, um, one thing, one difference that I've noticed in my life in terms of like one of the biggest benefits of credit is that it gives you a cushion, right? So it gives you sort of that breathing room, right? And when you have more credit, it's like, not to say to be riskier with it, but a, a move that you would have probably not made, you know, if you're only just relying on your cash or, you know, you could actually, you just have more confidence because you know, okay, worst come to worst, if, if I go flat broke or, you know, if I take this risk and it's not successful, at least I have something to fall back on. I'm not going to be just flat out. And I've noticed that that actually leads to like, you know, clearer thinking, less stress because I'm not thinking like, yeah, I, I used to stress about money, um, yeah. you know, in terms of like, man, like this is, I'm down to my last hundred bucks like you know like, yeah, like how yeah. am I gonna make how am I gonna make it through the week and yeah. I, I literally I remember 
you know, during, during that little time in college, like I literally had a $20 weekly budget for everything, for transportation, for food. I had it broken down. And I was just like, man, this is just isn't the way to be living. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, right. so yeah, I mean, there's definitely some direct, um, you know, I would say health and even mental health in, the term, in terms of credit because you're, you're just so stressed about like your next dollar. You know, if you're thinking like at that small scale, you know, it's going to stress you out because yeah. you know that they, if you only rely on your cash, there's nothing else for you to tap to just yeah. you know give, give give you a little bit of cushion give you a little bit of breathing room um and like i said it just gives you more confidence um yeah so so yeah, yeah man definitely, uh, definitely definitely and you know it's funny because you, you you're literally talking about me right now because <laughs> because you know the whole my whole plan like from like six months ago like when i first started i really really studying the the truck industry and i'm like man i gotta get the truck you know i want to get into you know there's so much money into the industry and I'm like, how can I do this? Because I was like working a part-time job and I'm like, this is not going to be enough. You know what I'm saying? But I said, you know what I'm going to do? And I, didn't, and I didn't even have like knowledge, like a lot. I, didn't, I wasn't dedicated to like how, how I am now studying about credit and things like that. But I said to myself, I said, you know what? Six months ago, I said, every check that I get, I'm going to take like 99% of that and just put it towards my credit. Because the only thing I had going for me was high balances. That's the only thing that was pulling my credit down. And I right. talked about this in a previous video. And I'm like, you know what? Okay, cool. So all, all it took for, well, actually that was three months ago. I'm, I'm bugging. But it was six months ago when I was like studying the um, trucking industry, find out about the trucking industry. So I said, I need to get my truck. So that's why, that's how I went from uh, a 540 credit score to a seven, well, right. actually went up again yesterday um, to 757 um, on uh, an advantage on, a, you know, credit uh, karma. But um, that's exactly what I did. Like I, I stayed, you know, I stayed disciplined. And my whole thing was, I said, you know what, I'm a, when I get to that point when I have good credit or enough credit, and I feel like I can apply, I'm just apply, I'm just shotgun everything, like, and see what happens because that's my right. last resort, and that's right. exactly what happened. You know what I'm saying? Because of you, and 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 I want to um clear that up again. It wasn't PenFed, so so just to be completely clear, it was a uh, 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 Navy Fed. I got 10K, and then I got um Chase Sapphire Preferred okay. for 10K. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, not 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 Penfed. Penfed denied me. I remember I commented in, uh, on your video. I was like, "Yo, Penfed denied me, man." Yeah, they're they're a little, little conservative. Yeah. yeah. I was like, "What happened, y'all? I thought y'all was going to understand. It's all good, man." But you know, <laughs> and then I got <laughs> and then I got the four K from Apple, so that's twenty four. So all I really need right now is like maybe ten or twelve, really, like the most to 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 really get everything started and start making money with the trucking. Um, and I'm not gonna be hiring a driver or anything like that. So it's just a passive like income or you know passive you know weight of doing business in, right. in within the industry and I'm doing it from the credit cards. I'm doing it from the credit yeah, cards. Like I, I, have, mean, I have some money saved up, but it's mostly from the credit. Yeah. I mean, it's powerful too. I mean, you know, you'd be surprised, like even some of my clients, like, you know, like I, I had a, uh, I have a, a, a client who's a developer and this is an mm -hmm. older gentleman. Um, he actually has a really high credit. He has his credit scores in like the eight hundreds. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because <laughs> I was like, uh, he he builds he literally like built houses and he and um you know he found me on Instagram he's like yeah I, I could use some funding to you know not use my cash as much because his money is tied up uh until the you know until closing right until he actually gets paid from the buyer uh, at yeah. closing and so yeah. I was like man like you could be using business credit to like get your supplies and you know uh, using business credit cards and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, like he, and, and he had the cash, like he, you know, hundreds of, you know, hundred thousand dollars in cash, but he he was just saying like, it's tied up and right. he's just been a cash only like old school cat. And I was just like, wow, man, like <laughs> if you only knew, like, you know, like I it definitely can, can, can help you, but he was leveraged because he's flipping the houses pretty much, but just all with his own cash. I was like, man, right. you're at the level where you can get enough funding to not even touch your cash, just use credit, right. leverage right. credit to, to, to really build. And that's really what it's all about because you gotta think like, you know, these 0% APR for 12, 15, 18 months. And that's the thing, it's uh, the time value of money, right? Um, every day, every day, basically, there's a there's an opportunity cost uh, with your money because your money can be generating more value from other productive activities you know, so it, it, it all depends on how you deploy that and 
you know, what your hustle is, but there, there's a lot of uh, things out here where, you know, you could definitely leverage and make an even bigger return. Um, and that's really the key to it. So yeah, something like trucking where, you know, I have a couple clients who are in the trucking business as well. And, um, you know, they, they, they tell me how it, it is profitable, but, you know, there, there are a lot of costs associated with it. Oh, yeah. Ma maintenance yeah. repairs gas and oh, stuff like that i had a client he does like cross country um yeah. and he's like man he showed me some of his gas bills i was yeah, like yeah yeah, yeah crazy, like thousand dollars to fill up yeah, was, yeah, yeah so yeah 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 because we're working with diesel in there so it's exactly. like every week every week at least like a thousand you know what i'm saying but you know it, it shows to show you how much profit there is because even after all those maintenance and expenses he's still profiting you know a, a good amount of money and and like you said you know the trucking industry for me, you know what I mean? Because, you know, at the end of the day, just like you, I mean, naturally, I feel like we just right. hustle anyway. <laughs> you know, it's like, but, but but the industry is just really a springboard to other industries. Like, I, that, you know, because I, I was actually, before all of this, you know, I was in real estate. Like, my part-time job was as a real estate uh, uh, leasing agent. And before that, I was just a regular, you know, real estate agent. But my whole plan with real estate anyway is to become an entrepreneur with it like like that client you had like i want to flip houses i want to wholesale i want to do this and that and own property and rentals and things like that so once you have i feel like a, a stable amount of income um you should just you know try to like you just said you know try to take that opportunity and put it into other you know streams of income like basically that's that's all it really is that's all that's what really boils down to like especially right now as you see you know I, as you just said it only takes three weeks for these businesses to fail it's like you didn't have multiple streams of income. <laughs> exactly. Period. Yeah, exactly. Period. You know? Exactly. So, so yeah, I mean, um, I give you an, another example, even, even in terms of real estate. So, um, you know, I have another business too, aside from, you know, the credit plug and stuff like that, uh, doing, uh, event, event management and stuff like that. So oh, nice, nice. my buddy, he started, um, he started doing like, like, this was like probably like six or seven years ago, but he was doing like, uh, like club promoting and stuff like that, where we basically get an artist, a couple artists that we got. Um, we had gotten uh, Rocco. I don't know if you know. Yeah, he's okay, with, okay. With, uh, with Future. Yeah, Rocco, uh, Rocco to real. Yeah, uh, Young Thug. But but this was back in like 2013. But anyways, long story short, um, we brought them in for two club appearances or whatever. And actually, like we lost we lost a lot of money on on that because. And here's the thing we were the promoter and we basically had to go through the club, you know, the club had to, to get their, you know, um, Your cut. Fee, fee up front. Right. Mm -hmm. But, and we basically would pay the artists and recruit whatever on the back end. But the problem was we didn't own the venue. So we basically got squeezed by the, by the club owner. And um, after that point, I realized like in this game, you need to own the real estate in order to, you know, make the most amount of money, right? Mm. So what I what I did two years ago, the first business started um, Mansion Event LLC, um, and basically what we do instead of doing like clubs and public venues that you know might cost like like some of the places in DC for like a night for like a Saturday night, it might cost like you know twenty thousand dollars to book it, uh, but you only get it for like you know four or five about six hours, you know. So what we started doing instead were get in these rentals for like these estates where it's more of a private setting and, you know, basically going with like um, short term leases three to six months. And the profit margins were a lot bigger because we actually control the property. But the next goal I want to do is actually purchase my own estate, you know, and that's probably like the next major move that, I, you know, ho hopefully uh, materialize. But, but yeah, like, you know, real estate and, um, having that foundation definitely uh will springboard a lot of other things because mm -hmm. it's just I, I i honestly you know think it's you know one of the foundational things too and even like like i just bought a house i just bought a house probably about, uh a year ago now uh, oh congrats man congrats you a homeowner yeah yeah so Damn. and like i said that, that was from like saving up for like three years for a down payment and yeah without credit that wouldn't have been possible and the, the neighborhood the community that i bought into was like a newer community because mm. the population is just booming right it's just n not very many places for them to build so the house that and, i'm in and, it, and, 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 and quick question i mean in the house that you're in in the neighborhood what's, what's, what's the properties going for right now 
So I don't know if you could see like behind me, but these single family houses right here go for like like high sixes to like low seven uh low to mid seven hundred thousand. Um but I'm I'm actually in a townhouse, uh like right okay, across. Okay. But you know, it, it's an up and coming like a lot of like young families. It's not like a like some of these other um in it in this area is not the most expensive area. It's actually one of the last affordable areas. Um you know, relatively speaking, right? This is Montgomery County. Yeah. I'm sure you you living in New York. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, well, over over here, like where I'm at, specifically in, in my part of Brooklyn, and kind of like a lot of different parts of Brooklyn, like six to seven is pretty much the average for a townhouse as well. But I mean, when I say townhouse, I'm talking about, you know, uh, maybe fifteen hundred to two thousand square feet, two bed, one bath. I, I, that's what I'm talking about okay. when, I, when I say townhouse. <laughs> Is it, yes. I don't know. Like when you say townhouse, you might be living in you know 2,300 backyard. I'm talking about like space. You know what I mean? Right, right. So, yeah, so the houses that you, I, I mean, it's kind of dark, so you probably can't see like behind me. But um, those, those are those are much bigger than my house, right? So those the, those houses probably go for like I was saying, high six to low sevens. But my house that we bought was. Um, and I remember this, I'll never forget, it was uh, four, 426,000 basically. Mm. Um, and that's actually a decent price for the county that I'm in, where I was renting before. And, and this is the thing too, we have to, like a lot of families are forced to live further away from the city because anything within like, a, uh, I would say like a 15 mile radius of DC, you're talking millions of dollars. So even, I mean, it's set like, you know, it's, it, and it's crazy, it's crazy that, you know, places, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's a, a good, a good, uh, you know, price point. But if this same house, like close to DC, you know, would probably be like 750, 800. So it is, just, it's, it's kind of crazy just how it is, but, um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, four levels, uh, five bedrooms, uh, about 2,300 square feet. So, you know, it's definitely a lot different from where I came from. Like I went from like a little, like, well, when I was house hacking, it was just a, a one or basically f uh, four people in a two bedroom apartment, four grown adults yeah. in a two bedroom. I really, we had to share the living room. So I really didn't have the space and everything. Now it's like, <laughs> yeah, like now, like me and my girl, like we could be in, I could be up on the fourth level. She could be in the basement. I can't hear her. You so know, you got she, four floors. So you told you well, you got three floors plus a basement. Yeah, basement. Oh. Um, yeah, basement and a and a loft. Yeah. So that's it's, what I'm trying to tell you. We're not getting that for we for that exact same price. Well, first of all, anything under five hundred, forget about. It. I'm talking about like six to seven is still not even a third of what you're getting for four sixty. Or uh, four thirty or four twenty six actually. Four twenty six. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, forget it. Forget about it. Forget about it. And that's why I'm thinking about moving to somewhere else because I'm like, listen, I'm putting all the, you know, I'm, I'm doing all of this to, you know, earn money. I'm putting in all my sweat equity and everything, and then I'm, I, I gotta, I gotta deal with, you know, I mean, six or seven hundred thousand. You're competing at a whole different level. Like, oh yeah. yeah that's yeah, the thing. Yeah. Like New, uh, New York. I mean, I, I can't, I can't even really compare it because forget it's, about it. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, 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 it's crazy because you think like, how do young people? Like some, like even someone graduate. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's gonna be messed up. And I feel sorry too for like young. I mean, I'm still a young person, but even yeah. you know, younger younger folks, it's like, how are they ever gonna be able to afford houses? <laughs> That's just... how I feel. That's how I feel because remember, I'm as a real estate agent. You know, I'm I'm I, well. I mean, I'm not really active like that like I used to be. But back in what you know, last year, two years ago, when I was like deep in the game as an agent. There's people coming up to me and they graduated from college, 4.0 GPAs. They about to be nurses. They about to be, you know, lawyers or whatever. They 50K in student debt and they looking for rooms. You see what right. I'm saying? Or, or there's nurses and pharmacists and people like that. They're making 100K a year, 80K a year, 120, 150, and they're looking for rooms. Right. Because I, that, that's the only thing that literally makes sense in this city. That's yeah, literally yeah. the only thing that makes sense. It's and crazy. I understand completely. I'm like, well, I'm so scared. Like, What's I mean, going on? I, I had a friend who graduated from, from my school, Maryland. They actually took a job in New York working for one of these um, agencies to do, they do like, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Moody's, but they do like, um, 
they rate like the the uh, I don't know if you ever heard like AAA or whatever, but yeah. they basically rate like these different bond agencies and like different companies give them like ratings based on their credit. But anyways, I remember I remember uh, my buddy was like, yeah man, I just got this job like making ninety thousand, and I was like, wow, like you know, it, they went through the whole <laughs> business school whatever. I'm like, damn, like you yeah. like you know coming out twenty three, you know that's a lot of money right. for twenty three. Right. 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 And then, like a year later, they're like, "Man, half of my paycheck goes to my my rent, <laughs> three thousand dollars for a studio." I'm like, "Oh yeah, man, yeah, 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 it's yeah. like how can you really get ahead with with stuff like that?" But yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. credit credit is I couldn't imagine, um, you know, just even uh, being in a situation like that too, um, without credit. Uh, just the whole real estate game. Like I learned a lot through the process too like you know what they look for um how they go based on your middle credit score to approve you for your interest rate mm -hmm. you know you just learn a lot of interest. i didn't even realize like you know even just about the whole real estate like because even in like my house right i noticed like the air the airflow from the vent just how the house is designed like certain rooms aren't as warm or cool because you you, you know it's just like little nuanced things like you learn about um just how houses are built and like working with the inspector. Uh, I mean, it's a lot. Like I, I thought it was, I thought it was going to be a lot easier. Like, you know, you just buy a house, you move in, right. you, know, you, cut, you cut the grass every once in a while and that's it. Right. But you know, I got to, yeah. I got to change like five different filters and I had to, you know, man, I, I stayed at Home Depot like basically every week, like the first couple of months. Oh, yeah. uh, just getting yeah, stuff. Yeah. So man, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean because, all, yeah. I mean, it, it's a great experience too, man. And I wouldn't have been here without, like I said, like going through that process of building credit. Um, I know for, the, I mean, I don't plan on moving anytime soon. So I know for the long term, you know, it's, it's going to hopefully appreciate in value. But, you know, we bought into like, a, a, a me and my fiance, we bought into a new, somewhat newer community, right? Um, and I'm, I'm just fortunate. I, I don't know if I put out a video. I did a little drive around of, of the neighborhood. This neighborhood, 15, this community rather, it's about, I would say, probably about 40,000 people uh, who, who, live, who live in the city uh, that I'm in. And 15 years ago, none of this exists. I'm gonna do a couple more like drive arounds, but um, th things still haven't caught up. Like they just built a grocery store in, uh, five years ago. Like they don't even have like a gym or LA fitness yet. So there's like a lot of opportunities, um, even in terms of businesses, man. There's a new commercial development they broke ground on. Uh, they, they've had the plans approved for like a decade now, but they were waiting for the population to swell up mm. and for economic dish conditions to change. But I put out a video and uh, just doing a drive around and I was just like, man, and this is the one thing, and I'm sure you could probably relate in New York like to get in on the ground floor of an opportunity is rare because you got to be there when the development is going on. After it's developed and, you know, after years of development, then the price is going up, right? So you, you'll never, it's really rare opportunities for us, like young people to get in on the ground floor. And so I just made a video uh, just saying like how I plan and like I have another uh, business partner who you know, we're trying to open up a barber shop. He, he's a barber. Dope, uh, dope, dope, yeah, dope. Oh, to, so, 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 really, what you're saying is, I'm about to take over. I'm. It's about to be the takeover, right? Hey, That's I mean, saying. I mean, <laughs> and the, the the reason why, like, and I've seen this so time, time and time again, even in because this area that I'm in, it's developed a lot. Like I said, since I moved here in like the the mid '90s, I mean, it was just like forests and woods, and you know. But now you have like even areas that aren't even like a little bit further from DC and they're booming and they're, they're prospering. And, you know, the businesses are doing well because, you know, the surrounding areas, you know, here, here a lot of the federal government jobs kind of um, insulate, you know, our, the economy so that, you know, even things that might be going on in other parts of the country, you know, people still have a lot of their government jobs. So like, being able to get in like on the ground floor as far as a business is very important and it's a rare opportunity because I already know there's not that many places left because every a, a lot of other things are already built up like you know developed cities that already have a culture and you know they've had like New York for example like 
you know, getting in on the ground floor, you're going to have to be way up at a high level. You know, we're talking, we're talking millions and probably billions of dollars to, you know, if you want to open up this store, you want to build this building. Um, and I see that I see that opportunity kind of slipping away, even in this DC area, because mm. you know, there, I mean, there's only so much you could build. And after right, that, exactly. a- after that, it's going to be like you don't have to go further and further out. So exactly, you know, I was just made a video trying to like, um, you know, just encourage people because just even people, people. Uh, I mean, it, you could be anywhere in the country, but just like, even if you're not ready to pull the trigger on something. Mm-hmm at least start some of these steps to position yourself because it's all about positioning, exactly. right? Um, and that's the thing I, I say with credit, it's like, you may not know when you're gonna need it, but just have it ready just in case. I'd rather I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not having it because <laughs> there, there's so, I mean, r- real talk, there's so many opportunities where, um, and I could relate to in the past, like I had an opportunity, a great opportunity slip through my hands probably about, I would say like two years ago, um, this was when I was, you know, like going through that journey of, uh, credit exploration. And I went to go talk to like this, um, housing developer, they, they built like custom homes and, um, they were saying they, they actually presented a deal, a deal to me. They were like, listen, if you buy this piece of property, we'll build it, put up all the, uh, construction costs. Right. And then once we sell it, you know, they'll recoup their cover, they'll recoup their um, costs or whatever. And then we basically would split the profits, you know, at, at the end of the sale. So at the time I wasn't ready, like this piece of property was probably about $180,000. And, um, and so this was actually uh, the city called Potomac. You can look it up. One of the wealthiest, okay. one of the yeah, wealthiest I heard about them. Yeah, Potomac, uh, yeah. towns, communities in the whole country. So, right. I drive recently, probably like a month ago. I dropped by because I, I I didn't wind up uh, doing that. I wasn't ready, so I drive. But I, I drove by before, and it was like an old house. So it was, it was going to be like a, a a complete tear down and then rebuild. So I dropped by, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and you know that same piece of property. You know they they wind up going through and doing the deal or whatever, probably with someone else, but. You know, there's this 8,000 square foot mansion, <laughs> you know, like gated house and everything. I'm like, oh man, I would have been up a couple hundred thousand if I was ready. So, I mean, that's just like, that's just like an example um, of just getting ready. And, and credit is really going to be the difference, right? Like, yeah, yeah. especially with real estate, because at the end of the day, you know, it's just a numbers game. It's just a paper game at the end of the day. Right. Um, right. Just positioning yourself. So, if, if there's one message I just want to get out to everyone, um, you know, just look into it, man, because, you know, whether we want to admit it or not, this is just how the world works. Um, you know, I, I was not to say I was in denial, but I, I just wasn't hip to it. Um, and, you know, I, I, like I, I wish I could have gotten into the real estate and the credit game at a much earlier, you know, you know, but I'm here now. And, you know, every, I think everyone should have that opportunity to be able to leverage. Um, Cause I think that's really the only way that our community is really gonna break the cycle of, you know, generational poverty. And, and um, like I said, like I, like I grew up on section eight, food stamps, all that, you know, to now being where I'm at and, you know, just, just getting started. So, you know, that's really, you know, my goal is, is to, to rewrite the narrative out there and, you know, do it through uh, financial literacy, credit education, and, you know, I'm going to keep dropping these videos. Um, you know, if any of your subscribers are interested, they could also check me out. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. De- definitely send, uh, send my um, YouTube link. And um, oh, yeah. De- definitely, man, appreciate, you know, this interview, man. Like I said, this is my first uh, collaboration. So, oh, yeah. You know, oh, I would yeah. love, love to yeah. also, ha- you know, ha- have you on my channel as well at some point. Oh, yeah, so, of course. Definitely, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I mean, listen, at, at the end of the day, you said it all. You know, get your credit right, get in the game, you know, do your research. Um, and like you said, you know, I'm a human testimonial, not only to listening to your videos and making it happen, and you because at the end of the day, I made moves. You know, I, I, a lot of people, they just stay home or they just, they don't make a move, you know. So I, I was exactly. actually, um, but at the end of the day, you know what I mean? I, I positioned myself, you know, I, I studied and then I, I got into the game. And it's crazy how I got all the credit 
right during the virus and right when it's like the best time to get into an uh, industry or get your or, or start a different hustle. Right. And so time and time was crazy. You know, I, I kind of planned the time, but I didn't have no idea if it was going to be like this, you know, and I didn't right. know I was going to get that much money too. And like you said, it's just the beginning, like literally like, right. It's just the beginning, you know what I mean? So I actually have a, um, actually have a, actually have a, a list of some questions that, you know, subscribers or, oh, yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or just people, just people in general, um, you know, would, would have or most likely, but I'll, I'll end it right here. You know, I'll, I'll put this as like a part one and then I'll say like in a part two, you know, I'll just go down a list of questions. So, so, but, okay. but either way, man, you know, listen, either way, this, this man right here, I, literally you just told, he just told you, he explained to you literally why he's the king of the credit unions. He's the, he's, the he's, he's, <laughs> he's, literally, he's literally the credit plug, right? Because he's literally connecting us into all these this whole different world of credit and credit unions and financing that people don't even didn't even know about but man you know that's the credit plug right there man and this is episode four of the podcast man continue like share, and subscribe and man that's that's it it is what it is <laughs> hey definitely definitely appreciate it bro yeah yeah we definitely have to uh schedule a part two man definitely 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 all right man. well peace out <laughs> all right bro take it easy man all until right, next all time right. all right, all right bro <laughs>